Yeah, I, uh, how do I put it? Briar's a, she, she is a character, let's just put it that way. She's an appropriate example of what happens when you don't touch grass for a long time. This might be the most interesting first impressions video yet, not because of the memes and whatnot surrounding her, but because of how ambitious the champion design team is with her while simultaneously giving off the impression of making an effort to pick a lane and stick to it. Ignoring the rather questionable design motif they went with this time around, I've heard both good and bad things about Briar before taking a look at her for myself. From what I can infer based on the past 5 or so years of new champion design, it seems like they are intent on pushing the envelope on what a champion should be allowed to do, but rather than go for more open-ended, ambiguous connotations like how they did for Viego, Silas, Zoe, Akshan and whatnot, they're opting for more straightforward concepts, but executing on them more creatively, which is a lot better than the alternative, so kudos to them. In any case, buckle in for our newest edition of 200 Years or Well Design, featuring Briar, the Restrained Hunger. Now, a huge part of Briar's personality is that she's always hungry, as evident by her name literally being the Restrained Hunger, and I bet she wouldn't be so hungry if she had access to Factor 75. Factor is a meal prep service that delivers handmade dishes right to your door. Instead of wasting tons of money on fast food or eating out, it provides you with healthy meals pre-made and ready to eat within 2 minutes or less. The meal plans offer a variety of menu choices with a rotating selection of 34 plus options for meals and more than 36 add-ons like smoothies, keto shakes, desserts, and more so you never have to get tired of eating the same stuff over and over again. Speaking of keto shakes, if you have a select preference or eating habit such as keto, weight loss, or if you're vegetarian or vegan, you can adjust your selections accordingly thanks to their range of plans from 4 meals a week to 18. Factor lets you modify food preferences very easily. I myself just ended cutting season, which means I can go back to bulking, so I'm excited to be working with Factor once again. If you're interested in trying them out, head on over to the link on screen, which is also in the description, and use my code POGVARSEF50 for 50% off your first box. Good to be working with Factor again as always, but for now, back to talking about a very questionable champion. Continuing with the trend of a playstyle surrounding a gimmick, Briars isn't a unique one, but definitely a novel and more nuanced approach to said gimmick. Technically, there are two. The first is that holy sh** guys, we finally have a new healthcaster champion after how many years of not having one? Unless you count Mundo's rework, there has not been a champion who pays an HP cost to use all of their abilities since Zack back in 2013. So actually, it's been over a decade since the last HP caster, which by the way, I made a video on if you want to watch something else after this one. The second is that Briar's gameplay is derived from the Berserker archetype, someone who literally goes to town on you, fight, fight, fighting until you die or they do. Members of the Diver and Skirmisher subclasses have the same theme of going crazy after their opponent, which may draw some confusion. But the key distinction between them and a Berserker is that the latter doesn't give a damn about anything and goes straight after their target, disregarding anything and everything else for better or worse. The only two champions in the game who I'd say qualify for this would be Trindamir, whose ultimate enables him to face tank infinite amounts of damage and not die, and Olaf, whose ultimate lets him shrug off any crowd control of any kind with the obvious implication that you can't peel him off of you. One would think making a third berserker would be kind of redundant. How can one design so many different ways to charge at someone with no regard for their own safety? The answer? By forcing them to do so. We're going to mix things up a bit and talk about Briar's W first, Blood Frenzy. This ability alone tells you everything you need to know about her playstyle. Blood Frenzy has two parts. For the first one, she dashes forward a short distance and enters into, you guessed it, a frenzy, making herself berserk and attacking everything in sight for the next 5 seconds if there's an enemy nearby during which her attacks deal damage in an area and she gains bonus attack and movement speed. It's important to note that her rank 5 Briar splash damage is equal to the sum total of her AD, making it so she does big damage to her primary target and everyone around her. After being introduced by Renata, the Berserk status is back, but now self-inflicted. I believe this is technically the only self-inflicted hard crowd control in the game, although I might be wrong on that. I know that Blitz solves himself with W afterwards, but that's not the important part. While Blood Frenzy is active, you can recast her W at any time to have her next basic attack to a huge amount of missing health damage and heal for a portion of the damage dealt. To the average player, the idea of rendering yourself completely at the mercy of auto-targeting sounds like suicide. Why would you intentionally inflict Berserk on yourself for 5 seconds, even if you can do a lot of damage during this time? Well, for one, there's obviously a way to prematurely deactivate it since that would be terrible game design for them to not have one. But then again, it's not that different from how most skirmishers and divers prefer to go about attacking anyway. When you think of someone like Xin Zhao, after burning his combo, he basically spends the next few seconds chasing after the nearest opponent and auto-attacking them. Jax, same thing. In fact, just about every physical damage dealer on the offensive chases after the nearest opponent and autos them while they wait for their cooldowns to come back up. Also, Briar can still use her other abilities during the Frenzy, so it's not necessarily a total lack of control. Blood Frenzy is not that different from many auto attackers in the past if you think about it. I know I keep showing this clip over and over again, but it really drives the point across. I will dominate, straight up took his hands off the keyboard and let Warwick chase after his target until they die. Briar basically has that feature built into her kit. And I kind of like it, it really sells the narrative of relentlessly attacking your opponent until they die. 
This aspect of her raises a lot of interesting questions. Let's talk about her E next, Chilling Scream. In addition to cancelling the effects of Blood Frenzy, it behaves identically to other stance type abilities, such as Irelia and Cassante's Ws, evidenced by the damage reduction while channeling. Curiously, she also regenerates a portion of her maximum health. Now typically, unconditional neutral sustain is a really touchy thing to give to a champion, especially a manalist one. Part of why Vladimir and Zack have to strike targets with abilities to heal is to prevent unlimited lane endurance, while Mundo's passive bonus regeneration had to get nerfed several times over since even a small amount was so broken. There are two reasons why I'm actually okay with Briar having this though. The first is that she doesn't have any passive health regeneration whatsoever, which is part of her passive, which I'll get into in a bit. The second is the cooldown, 18 seconds at the time of writing this. That's a sufficiently long cooldown to not only prevent players from camping until they heal back to full, but the healing is offset by the health cost you have to pay to use your basic abilities. Now onto the actual attack. Briar fires a blast in a wide area that deals magic damage to all enemies hit. If she managed to charge a full second, they're knocked back a significant distance, and when I say significant, I mean longer than Bane's Condemn. Speaking of Condemn, if they're pushed into a wall, they take bonus damage and are knocked up for half a second and stunned for a total of 1.5 seconds of immobilization. This is a really damn strong ability, like almost unbelievably strong. Not only does it have similar area coverage to Science Q, but look at that damage, what the f At full charge, the total comes out to 660 base plus 340% bonus AD plus 340% AP. That's the highest AD and AP ratio in the game for a single instance of damage, and this is a basic ability that stuns you for 1.5 seconds. Now, granted, seldom will you ever get the full burst. There are so many hoops you have to jump through to actually pull this off that, frankly speaking, if you get hit by this, you deserve to take that much damage. Let me explain. For one, Briar has to channel a full second to pull this off, and in League, one second is a very, very long time. This gives enemies plenty of time to dash or simply walk out of range, which is the second part. Chilling Scream has a max cast range of only 600, so it's really easy to simply walk out of it. Furthermore, she has to be in a position to knock enemies back into terrain, which is difficult to consistently achieve given that you have a full second to move around. Realistically, the only time she can get the full power of Chilling Scream onto a target is if you're fighting in the jungle and someone else on your team engages first. Also, unlike Nefiri, who I mistakenly assumed would be a jungler, Briar is in fact meant to be played as a jungler, which means that unless your top laner is is fine with going J4, you can't have both Briar and Jarvan on the same team for easy combos. Case in point, Chilling Scream's max burst is unlikely to happen more than a couple times a game, so even though numbers like that would be astronomically high even for a single target ultimate ability, much less an AoE basic one, it's not really as bad as it looks on paper. Who knows though, in practice it might be really easy to get the full damage. I'm sure for the past 2 or so minutes, a number of you have been spamming me in the comment section that Briar does have a way to set up her E, Head Rush. Don't worry, I didn't forget. Head Rush is, for all intents and purposes, a Pantheon W. It even has the same cooldown as Stun part. The only difference is that it has less range, but reduces their armor for 5 seconds. Believe it or not, I'm genuinely giving props to her design team for thinking things through this time. Head Rush stuns for only 0.85 seconds. You know what that means, right? Even against targets with no tenacity, they still have the ability to get out of the way at the very last second without a flash or with the defensive option. Fjord's Repost, Nocturne Spell Shield, Fizz's Playful Trickster, Zed Deathmark, Shaco's Hallucinate, or even Stopwatch and by extension Zanya's Hourglass. That 0.15 second difference prevents Briar from getting free max power chilling screens, which, to repeat, should be a challenge to pull off. And of course, if you have Merc Treads or a modicum of tenacity, you can easily just dash out before you get blasted. That being said, Head Rush is less of a set of tool for Chilling Scream, and more of a way to just get in range of a target to hit them. I mentioned earlier that you can cast a Q while she's in Frenzy, and despite being less than a second long, it's enough to get one or two autos off, plus the armor strike can help make those autos hurt a lot more. Okay, so now we can talk about her passive, and I still haven't even gotten to her ultimate, this is a whack ass champion. Briar's attacks and abilities cause damage over time on enemies that can be refreshed and stacked with subsequent hits, healing her for a portion of the pre-mitigation damage dealt. If the target dies while bleeding, she heals for 100% of the remaining bleed. Isolated in a vacuum, this is a very, very broken passive. Imagine giving this to anyone who can spam abilities. I was gonna say Cassio, but she's an AP champion. However, Briar gets no base health regen, instead gaining bonus healing from all sources based on a missing health. So she kind of has that Olaf passive going, where the less HP she has, the more she can heal. Her certain chance always have that when close to death gets stronger thing going. Olaf gets more attack speed and lifesteal, Trinomir gets more AD, stuff like that. To repeat, this is still my first impression. I'm not entirely sure how much of a trade-off not having any base HP regen really matters given that she heals off of all damage dealt and from her W and from her E and from her ultimate. Although, barring Chilling Scream, this heavily implies Briar has to fight if she wants to heal and can't just sit back and regen like Amundo or Garen can, which is good because it always gives her opponent a chance to shut her down. Finally, let's talk about her ultimate, Certain Death. In the words of Skin Spotlights, who the f let August cook? 
You can think of this almost like a Vex ultimate. Fire throws a projectile with virtually global range that continues traveling until it hits a champion, and like every psycho K-pop stan when they see their favorite idol, goes full on ballistic, dashing straight after them and exploding for a huge amount of damage on a rival that fears all nearby enemies except the person she's dashing to. She then enters an empowered blood frenzy state, gaining bonus armor, magic resist, lifesteal, and even more bonus movement speed towards that target. Like her normal W, this can be cancelled early by using Chilling Scream, but unlike her normal W, this Blood Frenzy lasts indefinitely until the marked enemy dies. Actually, it's not really a Vex Ultimate since you don't have a choice whether you want to go in or not. If it hits something, she will go in. Honestly, a pretty mild ultimate. It looks absurd in concept, but you can miss this attack entirely and lose out on all the benefits. And even if you get hit by it, apart from being a strong engage tool, it's a lot less scary than it appears. Her abilities paint a very clear picture, Relentless Pursuit and Attack. The idea is for her to essentially kill you faster than you can kill her, and with how recklessly she plays out, success on her is determined by how confident the player is in her damage output and how well the enemy team can play around her threat range and windows. It's not a far cry from how stat checkers play out, yet Briar isn't a stat checker, although it can feel that way sometimes. What I both like and dislike about her is that Briar effectively has no disadvantage state. Everything in a kit functions with the assumption that she's an advantage, the one on the offensive. Briar has unironically no form of disengage, and don't say that Chilling Scream's knockback is a disengage. Like I said, that move is one of the most avoidable moves in the game. You can't look me dead in the eye and say that 90% of junglers can't just sidestep or dash out of him. See, narratively speaking, it's entirely accurate to her source material. Briar's a berserker, and berserkers would literally rather die than run away. That's the whole idea. The thing is, this will make her the first health caster without some semblance of innate protection. Mundo is passive to shrug off crowd control and W to recover from burst damage. Zack has cell division to at least buy some time if he's caught out, and Let's Bounce is just as effective of a get off me tool as it is an engage one. Vladimir has sanguine pool, old Aatrox back when he was a health caster could rely on his death passive to reset the situation. Health casters are inherently not burst oriented, they're known for persistent damage output, and it's hard to do that when you explode off a single hit, which is why they have these tools at their disposal to be like, oh crap, there's a fight. Alright, hang on, time out, time out, give me a minute. Briar doesn't actually have that. Moreover, if Chilling Scream doesn't knock enemies into a wall, it actually hurts her pressure if she wants to fight due to knocking enemies really far away. Obviously, to account for that just by looking at her numbers and stats, one can infer she's really damn strong when she is able to hit you. You look at these numbers, you think she puts every duelist or diver to shame in terms of DPS, but a champion's viability has just as much to do with their adaptability as it does with how aggressive they can be. And Briar trades almost all of that adaptability for pure offense. This in tandem with being a health caster who can only reliably recover by constant fighting makes her feel like a literal feast or famine champion. Which, once more, is accurate to resource material, but in game that might make her a very polarizing champion where she's either completely unstoppable or completely useless, never in between. Briar has no fallback option, she can only deal damage. Her Q isn't good enough to be a stun bot due to how short it is in both range and duration, and she's also extremely easy to kite, making it so range heavy teams can play keep away against her the entire time, and if she misses her ultimate, she's effectively worthless against them. I love her gameplay premise. They not only revived a once forgotten archetype in the form of health casters, but they also brought back the berserker archetype as well, in a more modern style. I'm just wondering how polarizing a champion she'll be and how she'll be received by players. Is she going to feel really clunky or frustrating, or will she be too effective when ahead to her opponents feel like she's an infinitely better version of Trindamir who's already a fervently detested champion? All in all, a very wacky champion, not in a bad way. I appreciate that they stuck to boundaries and gave her ample amounts of counterplay, but part of me fears Briar will be one of those champs who are either 55% win rate pick ban or 45% win rate no one plays her, just because of how fully focused on offense the champion is. But anyways, that's going to wrap up my first impressions of her. Let me know what your thoughts are on Briar in the comments down below, whether you're excited for her or not. For now though, if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you left a like and subscribed. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at VarsFarm, join my Discord server, and check out my other first impressions videos if you haven't yet, plus a Hellcaster video if you missed that one. Till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.